Hey guys, James here, how's it going? So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about orbits, tides, eclipses, moon phases and seasons. Now it's orbits which are responsible for all of these behaviours, and orbits even hold our galaxy at a stable size. The Sun for example, orbits around the centre of our galaxy, the Milky Way, about once every 200 million years. I'll zoom in then to our Sun. Now, some orbits are extremely elliptical, such as Halley Bopp, for example, but others are quite circular, such as the Earth's orbit around the Sun and the Moon's orbit around the Earth. The Earth orbits the Sun once every year at a distance of about 93 million miles. I'll zoom in then to the Moon. The Moon orbits the Earth once per month and it orbits at a distance of about 221,000 miles. So let's explore a little bit about what, uh, how orbits actually work. Now every object in the universe exerts some gravity. Uh, the larger, the more mass an object has, the greater the gravity, and the further you are from an object, the less gravity you feel. In fact, gravity is proportional to 1 over the distance squared. In other words, if you, double, if you double the distance, you quarter the amount of gravity you feel. Now, there's no air in space to slow objects down, so an object should carry on moving at the same speed unless um, a force is applied to it. So, let's imagine we've got a planet moving with a small amount of speed around the star. If it's moving too slowly, it will simply collide straight into the star. If it's moving too fast, it will escape the gravity, gravity of the star completely. However, if the, if the speed is just right, it will be moving away from the star at the same rate that the star is pulling it towards it. So it should stay in a stable orbit unless another object comes along to interfere with it. That, however, would be a topic for another video, but to understand the next section, you'll need to understand a simple equation. Gravitational force is equal to mass A times mass B divided by the distance between the, the centre of the two objects squared. In this section, then, I'm going to briefly explain what causes high and low tides. The main factor is the gravitational force of the Moon, which you can see on the left of the diagram. On the right of the diagram, in green, is the Earth, and in the, on the blue, highly exaggerated, is the tides. Because the water at point A is closer to the Moon than the centre of the Earth, it's accelerated towards the Moon faster than the centre of the Earth is, causing high tides. On the opposite side of the Earth, at point C, the water is further away than from the Moon than the centre of the Earth. Therefore, it's being accelerated towards the Moon slower than the centre of the Earth. And this is what causes high tides. The Sun also plays a role in the tides as well, but because of it, the difference in distance, its effect is only about half as much. When the Sun and the Moon are aligned, the point of the Earth facing directly towards it will have the highest tides and this is why we have the highest tides in the summer. That's the basics, but the tide systems are considerably more complicated than that. There's also the rotation of the Earth, atmospheric pressure, temperature and winds which also affect the tides. The reasons for the phase of the Moon are quite simple. On this diagram then, the circle represents the orbit the, Earth, uh, the Moon follows around the Earth, and you can see light coming in from the right, which is of course the Sun. In this first picture then, from our angle, we can see the entire, in the entire light side of the Moon. In the second picture, due to our angle being slightly different, because the Moon's in a different position, we can see half of the dark side and half of the light side. And in the third picture, we see a new moon because the light side of the moon is completely obscured to us. The phases of the moon repeat every 28 days because that's how long it takes the moon to complete an orbit. 
We see the moon nearly every day because it happens to be travelling in the opposite direction to the rotation of the Earth. There is, however, no single dark side of the moon. Every single part of the moon is lit up at one point or another, but it just so happens that its rotation is in sync, in sync with its orbit, so only we see one side of it. The first type of eclipse I'm going to show you is called a lunar eclipse. This is where, from the Earth's point of view, the moon is completely hidden because of the shadow of the Earth. From the moon's point of view, this would be a solar eclipse, as it's the sun which is completely obscured by the Earth. Our next lunar eclipse is going to be on the 15th of June this year. You can see why this is the case from this diagram. The moon in the centre behind the Earth is completely hidden in the Earth's shadow, therefore making it a total lunar eclipse. The one at the top is only partially obscured, making it a, making it a partial eclipse, and the same with the bottom one as well. A solar eclipse happens when the moon passes directly in front of the sun. Our next solar eclipse is on the 1st of June this year. We're quite lucky living on Earth, in that the moon and the sun appear virtually the same size from Earth, and the moon almost covers the, covers the sun completely during a solar eclipse. This picture shows you how this works. From point B, you can see that the moon will completely obscure the sun. Between points A and point B, you will have a partial eclipse, like in picture A below, and between points B and point C, you will have a partial eclipse, like picture C below. The reasons we have seasons is completely due to the tilt of the Earth. The Earth, relative to its orbit, is tilted at an angle of 23.5 degrees. As you can see from here, the North Pole is constantly facing away from the Sun during the winter, and the South Pole is constantly facing towards the Sun. In the South, however, it is the, uh, it is the summer. If we fast forward to July, you can see that the opposite is true. The north is constantly facing towards the sun, and the south is constantly facing away. As you can see in this picture then, the north and south poles always face in the same direction. So, in the summer, in the northern hemisphere, the north pole is angled towards the sun, and in the winter it's angled away. Also, during uh, mid-autumn and mid-spring, there are equinoxes where there's an equal amount of sunlight as there is night time. This is why the sun appears higher in the sky during the summer and you have longer daylight hours. In this picture then, this demonstrates uh, the main reason why we have seasons. In the top picture, uh, this is showing an area of land near the North Pole and the sun shining its light towards it low in the sky. Because of the angle, the heat, set, the heat from the sun is spread over a much larger area than it is near the equator, shown in the bottom diagram. This is similar to the way you can use a magnifying glass to set things on fire. It's the varying intensities of energy from the sun which cause the seasons. So thanks for watching my little video about orbits, and I will see you soon. Bye.